Hello everybody, Marina here, back for another video. I know, I've been gone for a while, I was MIA for the longest time. But yeah, life kept happening. I keep saying that, but that's, the, yeah, the truth. Life kept happening. So today I'm going to make a short video. This is kind of a, a Friday read, kind of. I'm going to show you the books that I've been reading this month, the, the books that I finished this month and the one I'm currently reading, okay? So without further ado, let's go straight to it, okay? I'm, I'm reading nonfiction. I'm loving my nonfiction kind of vibe right now. I've read L'Afrique Mutilée. I don't know if you're going to see it properly. L'Afrique Mutilée by Aminata Draman Traoré. She was a minister of heart and education, I think, back in the days in Mali. And she's a very... A smart woman she very learned one and um, it's always a pleasure listening to her there are many things that you can learn from here it is written in French I don't think that this one has been translated yet but what, what I love in general about this woman is that she said things the way they are and she speaks a mind which many writers of French uh, expression tend not to be able to do they don't have balls especially males and I'm saying it you can quote me on that but I love reading um, these type of women who say what they say and they stand by it so even if it wasn't that convincing it was very enriching somehow i gave it three out of five stars the other one i've read loved and i highly recommend because this one i gave it five out of five stars it's uh, l'emancipation des femmes et la lutte des libérations de l'afrique by the late president thomas sankara this one has been translated in english spanish arab so whatever language it is that you read in you're gonna find this one and it is not that expensive it is very enriching this this one he's a speech that uh the late president gave on the woman's day in 1987 on the year he was murdered by his best friend we're not going into details for that this speech is was crafted for women but not women alone because while, while he was addressing women, he was also including men in there. When he became the first president of Burkina Faso, I'm saying that he is the president of Burkina Faso because when he became, when he became president, he was the president of Haute Volta. That used to be the name because his country, of course, used to be a French colony. But he took two words from different uh, languages of the land to create the name Burkina Faso, and he was the first president. When he made it at the end of the state, like 99% of the women in the country were illiterate, and he wanted to stop that. He wanted the women to be part of every um, aspect of life in his country, politically, economically. Um, he wanted them to get education, etc. and he was willing to work hard for it. And this speech, you know, keep in mind that this is a speech. This is not, it is classified as an essay, but it, it is a speech. He made it simple so that everybody could grab it. The aim was for the women in the audience to get every word he was using to invite them to take part in the destiny of their nation. And he does it so well. I might also come with a single review of this one because I really, really need you to read this one. Keep in mind that it was done in 1987 and it was Africa. So this is like nowadays everybody's talking about feminism, feminism, this and that, as if it was something new. In 1987, this was revolutionary. Like, yeah, you had to have real balls to dare say what he was saying and to dare do what he was doing because this is one of the rare African presidents who talked the talk and walked the walk. Yes, he talked the talk and walked the walk. So... I cannot rec recommend this one enough. It is short, but it is dense and it is rich and it is interesting. So, Thomas Sankara. And I know it, that, I, I don't remember the title in English, but you can find it, okay? And the cover looks the same. Whatever the language, whatever the language is choose to read it in, the cover will be the same. The title will look different, of course, because it's a different language. But if you see it, get it and read it. Like, really, read it. I highly recommend it. The other one I've read is Le Petit Manuel, Petit Manuel Antiraciste et Féministe by Jamela Ribeiro. She is a Brazilian philosopher and a feminist, of course. In this one, of course, she's giving um, 
advices. She is talking to the so-called Ali's, telling them how not to address the racial uh, issue. She's also talking to black people, of course. Of, uh, she's calling everybody, but the most important po points for me in this one was when she was um, underlining how not to what not to do when you want to be a uh, uh, Hali to black people, how not to pretend that racism doesn't exist, how not to tell a black woman who's telling you, or a black man for the matter, who is going through uh, a racial issue that what she's going through is not racism, that you know better. You haven't been in our skin when you're not black, when you, you haven't, you, you, you've never had to fight just to exist. When you the simple fact of being doesn't put your life in danger because you're not being killed just because you're black or just because you're white, sorry. Don't come and tell a black person how to do things in order for racism to disappear. Sometimes when you want to be an Ali, a good one, you have to sit down and listen. You shush, you listen. And even if you find it shocking, even if you're not the center of the, 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 the story that is being told. You just shush and listen. For the longest time, black people have never ever been the center of the story that they were told. But they've learned, they listened. Now they want to speak, you know, going to ask them to listen to you and to do exactly what you want them to do. We've been doing that for centuries. Our ancestors have done that for centuries. So if you want to be on Ali, you have to learn to listen somehow. Reviews of this book might be coming on my channel soon. So I will go in depth. The other book I've read, another, yeah, by the same author is this one. This is, uh, oh, the title is Chronique sur le féminisme noir by Jamila Ribeiro. I was a bit disappointed by this one in the beginning. Why? Because these are chronicles that, that she published in different um, media the blogs and uh, journals or whatever. She put them, to, she did put them together to create this book. What I didn't like in the beginning about this is sometimes the repetition, like she was, I'm gonna give you a concrete example. She talked about uh, the Venice Hotentot, uh, Sarah Bartman, the South African lady who was exposed in all the museum because she had this uh, beautiful buttock. Um, she talked about it once, twice, and the third time I was just like, oh, come on, you already talked about it. And I wanted her to open up to me. Like, I wanted her to speak on mine, not to tell me, to keep giving me examples of people past and present or whatever. I wanted to hear a voice. And when I, I, I just felt like, okay, I've had enough, I felt like she understood it and opened up toward the end. Maybe it was a bit too late, but it was great when she opened up and eventually started talking about her how all the things she went through how she she faced even mental uh illness kind of how tough it was for her to find a way in a society that is basically racist and uh, brazil was built just like america on the back of the slaves and even th their their history is even worse than that of america african americans because all the um, the journals were burnt all the, the 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 slavery journal were burnt so no citizen no no black men of brazil can tell you exactly where they came from what where the ancestors were from which part of the continent they were stolen from to be enslaved so when she was be just being herself i loved it the other thing that i uh, that got on my mind got on my nerves somehow was the omnipresence of uh, Simone de Beauvoir. I know she have studied her, she tend to admire her a lot, love her, but I had this feeling that she, um, Simone de Beauvoir was kind of, was kind of a goddess and that uh, her book writing became the Bible. Like everything she said, she had to illustrate using, uh, uh, quoting something that Simone de Beauvoir wrote. Uh, it wasn't sitting well with me. She also cite other people like the late Mama Maya Angelou or Alice Walker or um, Angela Davis and so on and so forth. But the, yeah, that part didn't really convince me. But I wasn't as convinced by this one as I was by Le Petit Manuel Antiraciste Féministe. But both were good. 
but this one yeah okay the only fiction yeah the only fiction i've read this month so far is this one that i read and finished and i'm gonna make a review of pokoa story because you need to to hear pokoa um i want to talk about everything about in this book mind you it's only 128 pages but the story is good so i'm gonna tell you about her pokoa this was written by a man and I think a certain part of the weakness in this novel come from the fact that psychologically speaking, you definitely know that this was written by a man, but the, the, the novel was good. Anyhow, what am I currently reading? I'm reading the three. I'm about to finish this one. I had to stop it. This is very good and I highly recommend it to those of you who who have loved uh, Brown Girl Dreaming or The Poetics. It is written in verse and the rhymes are magic. I, I, I love the story. I reached a point where something happened that required me to stop and breathe. That's me. So I kind of, I'm almost done. Yeah what this is what I have left I'm almost done I just need to breathe and go back to it so I know that by Sunday come Sunday I will have finished this one I'm also reading uh, Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall you know me and nonfiction so I'm taking my time this is how far I have gotten am I finished Hood Feminism today or tomorrow maybe tomorrow I don't know yet but I'm loving it you know, I keep saying that I'm not a feminist and this is the reason why I, I want to read feminist women, black feminist, black women who have things to say. I'm understanding why I don't consider myself a feminist. For those of you who don't know, um, yes, I'm 22 years old. That is true. But I've been living in France for like 30 years. Don't do your math on me. Don't try. Okay. Don't try. I say, don't do your math. 30 years in this country and whenever they were talking about feminism, I always felt like I was excluded from the movement. I wasn't, their priorities weren't mine and the, the problem they were fighting for did not concern me as a, a black woman, as an African woman, as simply as a black woman, okay? And reading her, though it's really uh, uh, centered in America, like she she's talking about gun violence and all the things that, I'm not saying that in France, gun violence doesn't exist but not to the extent that it does exist in the united states for example and i'm not, not saying that we don't face gentrification because it, we are facing gentrification even here but not to that extent uh, extent also but still the way she is addressing and uh dealing with each theme that she is um, writing about resonate in me and it makes me realize why I still do not consider myself as a feminist. Yes, maybe I'm healing, maybe I'm understanding and once, once I'll be done, I hope I'll be able to review this book thoroughly and to tell you at least to tell you how important it is to me and how important it is being to me because I needed this. Like really, you know in your life when you're reading something, you say, okay, this is what I needed. This is the examples I didn't have. This is why I was convinced that I wasn't a feminist. And I, I may not put that label on my name or anything. I'm a woman. I will always fight for women, um, right? And I will kind of always support women, but I don't, for, for me to do that, I don't need to have a label on, especially if that label to me represents something that I don't believe in. I will review this one when I'll be done. So yeah, I don't have much left to read, but yes. And the one, the other one I am reading right now is Mother to Mother. This is a nonfiction. This is a fiction, sorry, by Mama Sindhu Magona. 
I am reading it also because the French translation of this novel will soon be available by a publishing company named uh, Mémoire d'un Crier, and the title in French will be Mer à Mer. Like, it starts as an epistolary novel, but it is not totally uh, uh, an epistolary novel. But I love that she started uh, the book that way. I'm not too far into into the novel, really. I'm just at the beginning, so. Uh, yeah i might come back and talk about this one when i'll be done but yeah this i know i would not finish this weekend because the, the 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 two i am willing to finish at this one the hood feminism and that's remind me by Derek owusu and hood feminism by miki kendo these are the two i'm pretty sure i'll be done with come sunday and this one might gone until i don't know when because i'm still in my non-fiction mood so this one i'm, I'm gonna take my time reading it now this time i'm gonna take my time read to read a non uh, a, a fiction right things are changing i'm evolving so voila that's all i had for you today see you in my next video people bye bye